She's here. It's up to you. I'm sure you'll be kind to us. Measure, measuredly kind. Denise. Yep. Tēnā koe e te korumatra, tēnā kauta katoa ngā, ngā memo tēnei kaunihira, tāia te kia kauta ngā kaimahi uh, o tēnei kaunihira, tēnei he mihana, tēnā kauta katoa. Um, ai, i whai wāhi au ki te hare mai aha ko ngā tini mahi kei, kei te wānau ngā rau koe tēnei rā, he rā whakapūmau. Uh, nō reira, ka tāia te te tini me te mano, ai rotu i ngā toru rā nei tāia te ki te apōpō, um, ka mutu ai ngā, ngā mihi ki ngā konga. Uh, o te wānau rau koe i rotu i ngā, i ngā tau e toru nei. Nō reira, tēnei hi mihana kia tautau. O te rākia oma i tēnei wāhi i ti kia mātua ngā haku o taki. A tēnā koutou. Uh, thank you, um, Gudu. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you to all the councillors and the staff who are here today. And just thank you for this very brief opportunity. Um, and um, I managed to pull myself away from a really busy time for us in Ōtaki with Te Wānau Marauku's graduation, which is a three-day event for us this year due to COVID. So, um, yeah, yesterday it started and it will, um, it will conclude tomorrow. So quite a busy day for Ōtaki. But um, nice to be here with you today. So uh, I thought I'd just start and just... Um, and we have had an opportunity on numerous occasions to express our gratitude um, to the support that's been given to Ngāhapu Ōtaki, especially in the last 12 months that, I guess, Kim and I and Kirsten have uh, have been the face here at, at Council with others uh, for Ngāhapu and, and behind the scenes, the work that's been happening behind the scenes on a number of fronts and on a number of kaupapa. But to say that um, our time to date has been uh, a rewarding one. Um, it's been well supported by councillors and staff uh, it's nice to know that we have a welcoming whānau here at, at the Kaunihira of Kapiti, um, and it's not always a tohe that, that, that uh, follows, and a tohe is normally sort of a robust debate, as we call it, yeah, but a tohe can, can often be a pleasurable experience or sometimes a not-so-pleasurable experience, or it could be a, a one-way a one -way ride, yeah, on, on an iwi waka uh, for a very short period of time for some councillors and, and staff. Um, but to say that it's been uh, greatly, deeply appreciated, we're very grateful for the opportunity and the time that all the staff, kudu, um, and councillors, and yourself especially. So uh, we, we, we're the newbies here from Ngāhapu Wotaki, and, and I guess the, the other person we need to thank who's been by your side for a long way has been Rupini um, in terms of um, our journey from Ngāhapu Wotaki. And um, he's the transport manager for graduation this week, kudu. Um, <laughs> And he likes that because he likes to have a, a group of young people who he can sort of, you know, uh, tohu tohu and tell them what to do. But he gives his, uh, his um, yeah, deep, sincere thanks to you for the time that you've given to us and how you've helped us develop to where we are today. So I uh, just wanted to thank everyone, especially the councillors, and I've just had a brief chat with some uh, while we're having a cup of tea and uh, getting our head around and understanding the process now when the elections come up, training elections come up, and some councillors may be returning to the table and some councillors may not. Um, and so I just want to say for all of you who have been supportive of us and our endeavours to date, we, we are very grateful for the time you've given, including the staff. Um, it's, it's, I've got to say 99.9% .9 of the time it's been a pleasurable experience. Um, we've left, we, we're comfortable that we leave this place with our mana intact and we hope that we've left people's, other people's mana intact when we've departed from the table. We hope that that will be an ongoing process as we continue to work together in the future with whoever that might be, whoever that might be. I wish all of the, uh, the councillors who are standing, good luck, wish you well. Um, uh, I think you're brave, you're very brave yeah, for, for taking this on for another training, but th those who may not be returning, again, just want to yeah, give our sincere thanks for the time you and your families have committed. As an iwi organisation, we know what it is on your personal time, um, yeah, and your time's yeah, very seldom your own, and when you get your own time, you have to make the most of those precious moments with family and friends. So I hope some of you will get to do that more often in the coming year than not. Um, and then kia koe pe te, yeah, te koromatua gudu, yeah, uh, E kore e, e, e miki e mutu te e te taimahi ki a koe rotu i ngā tini tau uh, me o mahi nui te tohono a te kia mātou uh, ngā, ngā mana whenua o tēnei takiwa, o tēnei rohe, o te kotahitanga o ngā iwi i toru. Um, e mihi ana ki a koe mō ngā tini kaupapa. 
tai atu ki te te āhuatanga me te i te āhuatanga o tō kawe i tō tūranga i rotu i te kauni hene. Tai atu ki te hono atu me te kawe i ngā kaupapa i rotu i ngā hāpori o te te kauni hene. E mihi ana ki a koe koutou ko tō whāna me te mōhi ono ko tō whāna o te mei ko tunu. O riro i a rātou te utunu i ke whakawāti i a koe ki te tūtū ki ngā mahi o te kauni hene. E mihi ana i laa. So I just thank Guru for his time, and he's been pretty significant. Um, and and again to say that you know that behind behind every great woman and man, there's a family at home waiting to see them, <laughs> or to book some time with them. But quite often they're the third or the fourth one down the list in terms of priority. So saying to Uda, you can give them more priority now, and we hope you do that. Uh, we know we'll see you around in Otaki, um, and we thank you for all you've contributed to our progress to date. I'm very very grateful. Um, yeah, so that's really what I had to say, people, and I'm glad I had the opportunity to be here. My apologies for being late, but yeah, yeah, um, priorities took place at Tuana with, with, with our Manuhiri. So yeah, tēnā koutaka. I wish you all well. I hope we see a lot of you again in whatever role that might be in the new triennium. But again, yeah, heartfelt thanks to you all, all of you for the work. It's been a very, very interesting process with you all. And whoever's at the table next year, I'm sure they'll carry on carry on with the, with the integrity in which uh, you leave here at the table for those newcomers. Tēnā koutou katoa. Thank you very much. Kim. I'll just add my five cents worth. Um, Tau talk of what Auntie Denise has said. It's when we came, got board on board about 12 months ago, um, we didn't know what we were up for. Um, so it's been a bit of a baptism of fire. Um, but we've come a long way in those 12 months, and in that time, we've seen amazing changes um, with iwi engagement, with relationships, with partnerships. Um, I must say, I have been sitting in this table and various other committees. I've got a newfound respect for all councillors and council staff, what you go through on a day-to-day -day basis and, and what you try and achieve for the community. I mean, we all came here because we have that one common goal, which I think I spoke about today to a couple of councillors, that we're all here for the community. We're definitely not here for fortune and fame, because if we are, we're at the wrong table. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's that common goal that, that pretty much combines us and keeps us going forward. And we have had great engagement, um, you know, the respect that we've been given at these tables. Long may it continue. There's been a lot of change in the last 12 months and hopefully that will just continue on. So just, again, thanks to everybody at the table, um, and hope to see you again, whether you stand or not. Good luck to those that are standing. Um, keep that end goal in mind, because sometimes the devil is lost in the detail. Um, but, yeah, thank you all. Kenneth. Yeah, kia ora tato. Thank you so much for those words. It's so rewarding to know that um, that you're finding this work fulfilling and positive, and that's really fantastic to hear. Thank you for that, Denise, and um, really appreciated. So I've, I have prepared a little something to say today, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll say that now. To sit around this table is a huge honour and an enormous responsibility. We help to set the strategic plan for our district, we keep an eye on finances and make the best decisions we can on behalf of the community which elected us. But the best thing about being an elected member is seeing, supporting and celebrating the people in our community who work to make life better in our law here. <coughs> so I'd like to start by thanking some of the people who've left us in the past three years and in no particular order. Carol Rayhana, Ngāti Tua, Ngāti Haumia, Kuia, Trevor Daniel, Older Persons Representative, Philip Edwards, former Paikakareki Community Board Chair, Peter Rankin, Wainui Whenua Advocate, Don Polly, Founder, Paikakareki Informed Community, Margaret Griffith, Griffiths, Paikakareki Community Trust, Mike Olson, Business Advocate, Eric Gregory, former Waikanae Community Board Member, Abenal McKinnon, art supporter, Phil Palmer, environmental leader. I'm sure there are others and there'll be those that come into the minds of people around this table. So I'd actually just like us to take a moment 
to think about the people who serve in our community who we've lost in the last three years. Thank you. The past three years have been a huge challenge through COVID. And I'd like to acknowledge our council staff for the enormous work they've put on dealing with challenges and supporting us to continue our work. I can't thank you all enough. To all of the council staff, my heartfelt thanks. The dedication and commitment of the council team is not always met with the respect it deserves, but their hard work doesn't go unnoticed. I'd like to thank you, Guru, for your service. It's been an honour and privilege to work alongside you. I'd also like to thank councillors for their work in their areas of interest and the community boards for the enormous work they put in on behalf of their communities. I'd like to acknowledge former Chief Executive Wayne Maxwell for the commitment and deep thought he brought to the role and our Interim Chief Executive Gary Simpson for guiding us through what has turned out to be an unexpectedly challenging time. So some highlights for me over the last three years have been First of all, the opening of Te Rukuraki Kapiti, which opened just before the first lockdown. Hardly the best way to start a performance venue, but what professionalism and determination they've shown. Changing dates, limiting numbers, and always keeping their audiences safe. And hasn't it been great to see the full houses they've been attracting at that incredible venue. It's just such a joy to see the Mahara Gallery under construction after over 20 years of effort by so many. It will be a game changer for the arts in Kapiti and heartfelt thanks to go to all of the efforts of the gallery and the generous contributions by individuals and businesses in the community to make it happen. Another highlight was the blessing of the second affordable house in Paikakariki acquired by the Paikakariki Housing Trust and Ngāti Toa and it was an incredible moment. I thank the staff for their support making that happen. It's been a time when we reset our relationship with iwi. Thanks to the representatives who've worked so hard around the table and with staff and in their iwi. We are in a solid position to strengthen our relationships with Te Atiawaki, Whakarongatai, Ngāti Raukawa, Ngā Hapu Ōtaki, Ngāti Haumia and other Māori across the district. Our economic development work has never been stronger our team have worked hard to put Kapiti on the map regionally and I'd like to thank the Kotahi Tanga Board and outgoing councillor Angela Buswell for their work so far and wish them well in the future, particularly around tertiary training in the district. I'd also like to mention all of the incredible people who work to make our community and environment better. The many environmental groups, the social service organisations and the people who contribute to the work of council. These people make our community what it is. I'd also like to thank the many people who contribute to our decision making, writing submissions and responding to surveys. We've consulted on many pieces of work over the last few years, long term and annual plans, open spaces strategy and growth strategy to name a few. This input of our is essential to make these strategies a true reflection of the aspirations of the community. Going forward, the council is facing enormous challenges. Climate change, cost of living, the housing crisis and government reform. We've put solid building blocks in place to address these challenges so that the new council can hit the ground running. Whoever is sitting around this table then and the tables of our community boards, I wish them well. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou kato. Thank you. Rob. speech because you haven't got rid of me yet. Um, <laughs> I was hoping I'd go last and because I never got to go last in, in debating because I was always the team captain. So I was going to um, comment on, on, on what I've heard. So I've only heard two speakers so far so that's all I've got. That's right, I gave you plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been using it at all the candidate debates, Janet, but we'll move on from that. Um, um, I did notice that Iwi said 99.9% uh, of this was a pleasurable experience. I'd like to think that they were more truthful in their next training. Um, I also heard a comment from them that, that they're newbies, which for some of the more alt-right organisations in our world, that will be a real 
a real acknowledgement that I think you need to put right. Um, but And I also heard from Janet the people that we've lost. And I know personally that I've lost a lot of anti-vaxxers and their support. Um, and that's all I had, Mr Mayor, in terms of rebuttal. But I think it's worth noting, um, seeing as those are, these are semi-valedictory thank you speeches, that this was an incredible experience. And, and I, I really want to thank you, Mr Mayor, for giving me the housing portfolio because you did give me the area that I was passionate about and, and, and while I pity the poor staff that had to work with me who have survived uh, to still have jobs at this time and haven't moved on, I think our council has achieved something in three years that most councils could not turn around in. Um, so I, I, I'm really pleased that should I uh, not be here in a, in a week, that there's something that I can be proud of, that is an achievement that will benefit our whole community. But to all the staff who, who do help us and, and work with us, um, I think the words that Gwen Compton often used is contestable advice. I think that is just so important as we move forward that advice is always contestable and we, we are, are willing to butt heads and, sh and shake down ideas so that that select committee process that Parliament has, we have around this table so that we can end up making the right decisions. And look, I, I, do, I do not envy the jobs that you have um, because our community often don't see how hard you do work or how hard our councillors work. And the, and the incredible amount of information that we have to process and then try and come to logical conclusions on. Um, so without preparing the speech and, and um, being somewhat caught by surprise, it's been, a, it's been a real pleasure working with everyone. I know Angela and I first sat next to one another when I was wearing political colours, and I'm pretty sure that she thought of me as the devil in disguise. Uh, now she knows I'm no longer in disguise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's been wonderful to get to know and work with people that you, um, you, you just didn't know. And that includes the staff, it includes uh, all our councillors, and all those people from the community who rock on up to you at any hour of the day, whether on Facebook or in person, knocking at my door, to have a conversation. And that's why we have three dogs. Um, <laughs> to encourage all of those conversations to be somewhere safe. Um, but thank you very much. I, I, like many people, hope that we're still here to continue to add to our community. But if not, it's been an incredibly pleasurable and an, an amazing learning experience as well. So thank you. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I didn't realise until I got to the meeting today that I would be doing a valedictory speech. I kind of thought it was just for those that weren't standing again. Uh, Janet reminded me, but I opened up my journal and went, oh, it's okay. I think five months ago I wrote the first page of my speech. I must have been in a really bad mood in a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so I reread it. I reread it and it's okay, so I'm going to read it out. <laughs> Firstly, thank you to all the residents of Cavity for supporting me to council three times over. I want to thank my early mentors ten years ago, Alan Tristan, Chris Turber and the atrocious Nigel Wilson. And those family friends who inspired me to be in this very demanding and enjoyable role, representing the ratepayers and making a better capital for our home. And they are the late Mayor June Oakley, Joan Shirley, the formidable Joan Shirley, and Councillor Diana Munston, who I sought out to <coughs> emulate 20 years ago in her wonderful career in council. And I want to make a special mention of thanks to uh, Mia Jenny Rowan, a wonderful role model for me, and for her grace and her patience that allowed that she has always shown me, and it allowed our friendship to grow out of complete head knuckling adversity into a real friendship that I absolutely value today. Um, I want to thank my family for their support in all these years, and I thank my colleagues. Uh, it's been a pleasure, it really has, to get to know you and all the others over the last three trienniums. And in particular, this triennium, I've enjoyed working with my four female colleagues in the Environmental Coalition as we managed before, between COVID lockdowns and things, to fundraise together to for two school uh, college scholarships for local children, local students. And um, I think we need to 
give ourselves a clap or the bat for that effort. It was great. Um, seven of the ten years I've been a councillor, we were in deliberate pattern of prudence to pay down council debt, so I don't particularly count new big infrastructure projects as my big successes. Instead, I look back to my original goal, which was to be an ad active voice for the public to ensure Kapiti Coast continues to be the best place to live, work and thrive and into the future. So I count the hard work we've, been do we've done on things like the district growth strategy, the district plan and, and all built around the new expressways through our district and with attractive safe new town centre designs in my hometown, which I just love, um, I really do. And, and um, to all the staff, past and present, um, absolutely appreciate you all. Um, and we will grow well in Kapiti, thanks to you and your hard work. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Councillor Vranov. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. So, um, I wasn't expecting to do this today, but I will, um, I've written a few notes down here. So I suppose, um, as you all are aware, this is my first term here as a councillor. Um, but previous to that, I was the chair of the Waikanae Community Board and I was a member of the board. And I suppose, on reflection, the reason that I got into local body politics was um, going along to, to support two of my friends um, um, with the petition they had on Pika Pika Beach for uh, vehicles driving along the beach. And at the time, I had an eight-month-old child, and uh, so we rocked up to this meeting. My other friends had young children as well, and um, uh, they had to wait a long time before they were able to present their petition. Um, but basically, there were no females, I don't, pretty certain there were no females on the community board, and um, th they were, I suppose they were older um, members of the community board as well. I, I, you know, that there was a, you know, a, a light bulb moment for me, um, saying, well, this is not right, I want to, and I've never ever thought about doing anything like that before, about putting my hand up to, to better represent our community. And I suppose as time has progressed, I've moved, um, you know, from being a, 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 a member of the community board to being a councillor. And it's, I think I've grown into the role, and, and I know at times they ask very hard questions. But I think um, fundamentally it's about um, giving a voice to our community and, um, and hopefully at times being able to talk to them about what's going on uh, around the council table. So I suppose, um, I, first of all, I'd like to thank um, the Waikanae community for um, supporting me over the time that I have been an elected member for them. And also, too, um, for all the elected members that I've worked with, and I suppose particularly in this triennium with, um, with my fellow councillors, and I, I think we're all a fairly congenial group of people, and most of the time we have um, we have discussed and at times quite brutally discussed the issues rather than the person, which I think is really, really important. Um, I also too would like to thank um, the mayor and the staff for the, all the time and the energy that they've put into preparing reports and being very, very patient. I know at times I push the button, very, very patient at responding um, very professionally in, in their responses um, that, they, that they give. Um, and it's not necessarily what um, I or the, um, members of the community are actually wanting to, um, to hear. So I suppose, so as a councillor, I, you know, I feel like I've grown a lot over that time and I suppose it's about getting my head around the information that, that you know, we've got to deal with and I suppose that's also grown over those three years as well. And as um, the person who's had the environmental wellbeing, sorry, yeah, the environmental wellbeing portfolio, it's sort of been a very loose description. But I suppose with my background, I have, you know, I was, I love that role, and I suppose that in behind the scenes that I have, I have made a difference into some, into some particular projects, such as the Mangoni Stream in Tihoro, um, and I suppose. There's probably two parts to our role. One is actually uh, making decisions around the council table, and the other one is what you do in the community. And I suppose I don't, you know, go out and shout about all these things that I'm doing, but you know, I like to get on and, and talk to people and, and um, make a difference where I can. And um, I think that's 
something that um, I, I think that's important. So I suppose in terms of, um, you know, we have made some humongous decisions over the last three years. And I, I suppose um, you know, some of those big policy decisions, um, but I suppose specifically as the Waikanae Ward Councillor, I'm very, um, very pleased to see that the Mahara Gallery, Gallery development is progressing as it is. We've seen um, a, a revamped Mahara place and w and we've got um, basically some plans and moving forward on the Waikanae Library, even though that's probably a little bit slower than we actually had all had hoped. So I think um, at the end of the day, um, I have, enjoy I have enjoyed this, I feel I've made a difference and I think we've all made a difference and contributed en enormously to our, um, our community and I think people don't realise um, quite, um, you know, uh, what the commitment is. So, so I suppose at the end of, um, of this little splurge, it's about reiterating my thanks to um, fellow councillors and to the staff and to our community for for helping us where they can um, in terms of um, making this, you know this role as um, I suppose beneficial for for other people um, as they can. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy. Oh, this is Brett Smith from the Major Council. Could go first. Doesn't matter. Just go. Cool. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't repeat. I didn't prepare anything either, but just after hearing Jocelyn say, well, why I got on council in 1995 was because in 1994 I came up to council to the council and said, could I please speak to somebody because we needed a youth centre. And they said, no, we didn't come to the counter. So I said, well, next year I'll be on the other side. And I was. <laughs> <laughs> so I started off my career after being home, home um, mother at home for 30 years. And I was on there for 12 years, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and went away for a couple of years, um, yeah, family, and I came back and I thought, well, I don't think I really want to be a councillor again. So I got back on the community board and have been there ever since. But now, as chairing the last three years as the Parapari Muramari community board member, I want to be back on council. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> so I'm doing my best. But it's been really, really good, and I must give a big shout out to Mark the Hart and Jane Knox. They've been absolutely amazing and supportive as chair of the, of the Parapari Nuramari Community Board. And I'm here for the community and listen to their needs and try and, you know, get them heard around the council table. So I will continue to do that. And I absolutely love being here and meeting all the people in the community. It's amazing. But you see, sometimes it takes a bit longer because it took 25 years for the youth centre to pop up. And Mahara Gallery was also on the books way, way back in the 90s. And because they were going to lose the Francis Hodgson's artwork then. But anyway, it's finally happening. And I said the other day, you know, it usually takes 25 years for anything to happen around council. But mind you, the Performing Arts Centre was a bit cocky than that, wasn't it? So that's good. But no, I really just love being here and listening to the community and bringing their voices forward. And um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's about me. I won't go into anything else because my kids say I talk too much. And so I <laughs> shut up, so I will. So thank you. <laughs> Chris. Right. Well, that, you know, better go to the reason why how I first got on, and, and it was the old public transport um, situation. The train was going through to Waikanae, and we had a bus service that went all the way to Paraparaumu, and all of a sudden it was going to stop at Waikanae. And um, most of our elderly people that get on the bus to come down to Coastlands and then go back up to Otaki again discovered that they'd have to run the gauntlet of the, the car park right through and hop off the bus, get on the train, hop off the train, get through the car park to get to Coastlands, carry all their parcels back to the train, off the train and on the bus. So we managed to actually get them at least one bus going in the morning all the way to Coastlands and all the way back again. And then they discovered that, hey, it was actually coming back at just after 11, so they couldn't even have lunch with somebody down there. So then we, we progressed it and got the bus coming, a uh, later bus coming back from, from Paraparaumu. So that was actually the start of, of my career and, and I was very, very lucky that um, I had James as, as Chair of the Otaki Community Board, great mentor, and when he became Otaki Ward Councillor, I was very fortunate to become Chair of the Otaki Community Board and I've loved the last six years. 
the last three weren't quite as good as the first three with COVID and all sorts of other problems that, that seem to crop up. But it's made me very enthusiastic to try out for our ward council now that James has stepped down. And I sincerely hope I will make that position and um, will give it my all if I do. And I'd also like to thank all the councillors around the table and the mayor for support they have given the community boards and, of course, the staff. We had a great our EA that has been with the Otago Community Board for 13 years is now sort of stepped back and we've got Democracy Services taking over and I'm sure they will be every bit as efficient as Samara. And we've had a wonderful group manager in Janice helping us, helping us out as well. So I'd like to thank all the staff and all the councillors, Chief Executive standing in and, and of course Guru who is an Otago person and I'm sure we will see him around a lot in Otago and hopefully at board meetings. Thank you. Lanford. Yeah, I feel like not many of us prepared things to say, so I'm just carrying on with the kind of theme of very impromptu for Cardo that are top of mind. I have to just say thank you to everyone in this room, and sorry that we have our backs to all of you as well. I'm kind of feeling like I need to do a bit of a spinning corridor. Um, being elected at the age of 18 as New Zealand's youngest elected member in over a decade, I was pretty nervous about what I would be stepping into, and I have to be completely honest about that. There have been moments where, you know, the self-doubt and the imposter syndrome creeps in, and I'm like, what's someone like me doing sitting at this table? Um, what authority, what mandate do I have to speak on behalf of, you know, the Pākehira Hiramasi Ward, but also more broadly our young people across the district, uh, and, and ensuring that we take climate action urgently? But I think you've all kind of keeps me reminded of, of that and my place here and the importance of that voice. And so I just really have to say a big thank you because, yeah, it hasn't, it hasn't always been the easiest role. And I'm sure for all of you and also for all of us sitting around the table, we've, we've all had those days. But, um, yeah, we'd just like to acknowledge the support because I have felt incredibly supported and enabled to achieve the things that I have wanted to achieve over the last three years. Um, and talking about kind of people that have been very much mentors, Jenny Rowan has, has been that person for me in a, in a very big way. I've also been mentored too by people that I myself have mentored. So this really kind of mutually beneficial connection. There's this young boy Cordell who I mentor every week and he goes to Pakikiriki school. He's almost 13 now and every single week we catch up. He's always like, Sophie, how are you going? It's stressful in there. Like we, we see you, you know, at the table with all the adults and, and we just want to say <laughs> <laughs> his kids, his friends, literally these kids at Pikakariki School, they look out for my billboards and they, you know, they sometimes check out what we're doing and they and, and it's just that whole kind of like string of connection I think is something that I really appreciate kind of being able to be a part of and I think it's just incredibly important because the succession of decisions that we're making now and the impact that they'll have for the longevity of our coast is, is something that can't be underestimated. So people like him, again, at, at the age of, of almost 13, who keeps me reminded of the importance of taking care of ourselves, but also of, um, yeah, of that kind of fire burning inside of us to make a difference is just incredibly inspiring. Um, also people like, you know, our Kapiti Star Jam Fano. I go, go along to Star Jam every week and, and dance with these incredible young disabled people from across our community and, and the things that I learned from them are just inspiring. The Youth Council, so many incredible young people who I can very much see sitting around this table in, you know, three, six years time because, yeah, they, I truly believe they have the energy, the passion, the aspirations to, to help take this district to the places that it needs to be. So I'm, yeah, very much inspired by them. People like Graham Coe, people like Barbara Edmonds, who does incredible mahi for our community. People like Aidan O'Connor, who I worked with on self-isolation support Kapiti and uh, standing up a response to that, a very much kind of community-focused and organic response. People like them, I just think, should be acknowledged. And there are so many more. And, and thanks to, to Councillor Holbrook for acknowledging those who have passed, because I think, again, that's an important acknowledgement to make. Some highlights for me, I would say the strengthening of our iwi relationship and the ability to just to have more opportunities to connect and to create space for the whakaro that is again, deeply and sorely needed in, in this space. And, you know, if we think about how we're going to adequately respond to climate change, Matauranga Māori has to be, you know, front and centre of that corridor. And having a deep respect for the land uh, has to be, again, front and centre of how we grow well. Our Growing Well document, very proud of that. The establishment of the Raumati Community Board. Small things like the safety improvements down at Poplar Ave. And I know that sometimes 
um, felt like myself and, and community members have potentially been a bit, bit, a bit naggy on some of those things, but I just, again, appreciate the reception that we've been received with and the action that's been taken. Um, so yeah, I won't, I won't go on either, but um, yeah, thank you so much again to, to kind of hark back to how I've begun um, by just saying, yeah, thanks for, for accepting, <laughs> accepting what I bring to the table and for making me feel really supported and being able to be my full self in a space like council. So, namahi nui kia kato Thank you. How's the holiday? <laughs> Wrong button. <laughs> Bit of a worry, isn't it? Um, yeah, look, I had a couple of negative things I was going to say, and I'm just going to flag all that because this is not the time for that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's all right. I'll leave that to Gwen, I'm sure. Um, I'm an all-in sort of person, you know, and um, I've found getting involved... I moved up here about 15 odd years ago and been living in cities and that sort of sort of thing. And one of the things about Carpety that has captivated me, if you like, has been its community. I've never experienced that anywhere else, you know, in, in my life. I've been in a hospitality background and it's it's you, you never get involved in community stuff. And um, so it's been very eye-opening for me, community and council and how it all works. And I'm gonna do a big shout out to a good friend of mine, Carl Weber, because I met him at a community board meeting, and he introduced me to the values of community. And we've tag teamed all sorts of stuff since then. I guess part of me um, standing last time was just bad time to get paid for it <laughs> because I was putting so much time into it. But I have found it immensely, immensely rewarding. And, um, you know, <laughs> guys, we're not getting any younger, you know, and, um, and hospitality is a young person's game. And, um, and, uh, it just appealed to me to be working for my community. Um, the personal growth that I've had with regards to this role has been, for me, an eye-opener as well. You know, you can have your own businesses and you can have all that sort of stuff. But what I've enjoyed is being part of a team because you do it alone a lot in those sorts of environments. Um, I've formed great community relationships, professional relationships, and friendships through this whole process, which I will treasure for the rest of my life, you know. Um, and you, you, get to, you get to learn different things about different people. It's been challenging, there's no doubt about that. It's been the norm for me, I'm a first time counsellor, I care all for the people that have been there previously, but it's, it's, um, it's been what I call invigorating and interestingly fun. And my wife can't get her head around that in the slightest, <laughs> how we find this interesting and fun. Um, I want to acknowledge the length of service by a lot of the councillors around this table. Guru, yourself, the amount of time that you've, mm. you've dedicated to your community. Angela, yourself. Janet, yourself. Jackie. But I also want to do special, uh, I want to do a special shout out to James Coots because I think, I, I, I found his um, approach to council very much a guiding and inspirational life to me if you like, with regards to, uh, I suppose, applying a business principle to the things that we do as well. It's a shame that things have ended up the way they have as, a, as an exit for um, James, but, um, but I just wanted to acknowledge that as well. I also want to acknowledge that this has been challenging times for COVID, but for also for local government in general. And I think we've only had a taste of what's coming. And that's scary. That is really scary. And um, that's one of the reasons why I put my hand up again. I want to continue this journey because I've changed. I, I, I enjoy working for my community. And like I said, I'm an all-in person, so I've tried to learn as much as I can so I can be of use. Because, I, you know, everyone's a tool. Everyone's, everyone's um, got their, their, their part of the clog in the wheel and the way that they fit in. Um, I celebrate our Māori relationships, our iwi relationships. And I, I think it's been epitomised by... It's not just about a relationship, and I really want to take the hat off to the staff and your team as well, because something that's come through for me, it's not just about relationships, it's about understanding. It's about understanding, and I think if we take anything away over the last 12 months, is that staff have taken the time to get that understanding, and are stepping into those equations. And they're not hard equations, they're just ones that we're not familiar with, and they're a bit scary. And if we can break that barrier down, I think there's going to be a whole raft of... Um, of inspirational 
uh, moving forward uh, in our society. Um, I'm proud of the work that I've done for my community, but I didn't do it alone. We did it as a team. There's a professional team here, but there's a friendship team here, and there's, there's a team here as well. And um, over the past three years, it's... it's um, and I, I hope to continue the journey, but we all know what will be will be. I think it's not a fatalistic attitude. It's just a bit of a roll of the dice. I'd like to think I've done the work, and I'm looking forward to being around this table in the next triennium of whoever's here as well. And um, I pledge to work a part of that team for the betterment of our community, because I don't know what local government's going to look like on the tail end of all the reform that's coming down the pipeline. But one thing I am very comfortable with is knowing our district is in good hands. You know, by the people that have put their hands up, by the people that are here working with us now. But, um, and it's going to be interesting to see how mm -hmm. it goes <coughs> in the next law. And even the people that, that, that don't end up in council, I've got a funny feeling you might be standing down there poking the stick to make sure things are kept on track. And that's a good thing because we all care. So um, that's me. Um, it's been great. Thank you very much. It's been a ride. And um, I certainly look forward to um, whatever the future holds for all of us. And I wish you all the best. Thank you. Council Compton. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, one thing you might not know about me is that I love public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually I get severe anxiety to the point of panic attacks when it comes to small talk, hence why you find I leap at every opportunity where a microphone gets chucked in front of me, but if there's a crowded room or a big public meeting where I've got to mill around before or after, I will turn up at the last possible minute because I will freeze, I will get tremors. It's, uh, yeah, it's an odd affliction given that most people absolutely hate public speaking and love small talk. But anyway, when I was thinking about today, sort of my final act sitting around this table, I found myself reminded of a story recounted both by Plutarch and Suetonius, um, but we're going to use Plutarch's version for this, so apologies to Suetonius, I'm sure he'll be rolling in his grave somewhere in Italy. <laughs> but anyway, in it, a young Julius Caesar, who is then around 33, he's recently been appointed as quaestor to the province of Hispania by Baitica in southern Spain, and while in its capital, the ancient Venetian city of Gades, the young Caesar, he'd been reading um, a copy of the history of Alexander the Great's life, and he was moved to tears by it. And his, his uh, attendees and soldiers who were with him were like, what on earth is wrong with you, mate? Why are you crying over this man who's been dead for two and a half thousand centuries? And Caesar replied to them, do you not think it is matter for sorrow, for so sorry, when Alexander at my age was already king of so many peoples, I have yet achieved no brilliant success. Now that episode is uh, seen as sort of an inflection point in the young Caesar's life where he then goes on to become the major historical figure who, and spoiler alert here, changed the history of the Roman Republic and the Western world as we know it. Um, but the reason why I thought of that story isn't because I've got dreams of ruling an empire from the Aeonian Sea to the Indus River, or nor am I tempted to take an army across the Rubicon. But rather, because this term is coming to a close, and it being my first elected position, much like Caesar's was heading over to Spain as a quaestor, um, it made me reflect on what I've achieved and what I actually want to achieve in my lifetime. Now, what are some of those things? Well, I think the first thing we actually have to acknowledge is that when we all sat around this table uh, nearly three years ago, none of us had an inkling that within six months we would be dealing with the largest global pandemic since the uh, influenza pandemic at the end of the First World War. Um, and that was a pandemic that made the best laid plans of mice and men go awry. Navigating that pandemic and our district's response to it, I think that is in itself something that we can all be incredibly proud of. Um, and that's despite the attempts of some in our community who have attempted to sow division over what were actually necessary public health measures in a period of extreme uncertainty for Aotearoa. So setting that context um, of the pandemic to one side, because that has undoubtedly flavoured our entire triennium, um, here's a few of the things that I'm most proud of during my three years here. The first has been unapologetically taking that lead on pushing for local government reform and getting that national momentum that eventually saw the government announce the review into the future for local government. Now, while it isn't quite the Royal Commission that I called for, as with any negotiation over policy, uh, policy position, you start high and you see if the other party will meet you somewhere in the middle. 
But the real challenge now is whether the government will have the political courage to carry through on the most comprehensive set of reforms to the sector since the reorganisations of the late 1980s. Right now, this entire reform program, that's the Three Waters, the Resource Management <coughs> Act, and then whatever gets re recommended from the Future for Local Government Review in two weeks' time, it all sits on the precipice. Sadly, I worry that these reforms may be put on the chopping block for political expediency heading into next year's ele general election. The problem is with that approach is that even if Labor does manage to retain the government benches, they'll likely be doing so in a coalition of multi -parties, multiple parties that won't necessarily be conducive to carrying out the wide-ranging reforms that our sector so badly needs. And if the government doesn't use the next year to enact these reforms and they lose the next election, chances are the opportunity to pursue any sort of reforms and the large-scale overhaul that we need is going to be left and lost. And that's going to leave local government with either a fundamentally broken status quo or leaving us in an untenable position with a half-finished reform program stuck in limbo. The next thing I'm most proud of is how I've helped transform the conversation around how Kapiti will grow over the next 30 years. I remember the eye rolls and the snarky remarks when we started working on our new district growth strategy, especially when I first suggested that Parapara Umu was going to become a city in its own right and that we needed to embrace what I called city thinking to plan for the future. By the time we finished that strategy, city thinking was at the centre of everything that was in it. And the government, then they came along and very helpfully delivered us a uh, coup de main through the National Policy Statement on Urban Development that's pushed councils into making some of the biggest changes to densification that we've seen since the Resource Management Act was passed. And then Parliament came along with their coup d'etat with the medium density residential standards, and that fundamentally has changed the playing field in favour of enabling wide-ranging medium density housing. As the Infrastructure Commission recently observed, council planning in all of our metropolitan regions in favour of greenfield developments at the urban fringe while protecting existing urban areas from intensification had led to 69% of the increase in house prices over and above normal background factors since the 1970s. That's why I'm proud of our intensification plan change. While some have decried it as being equivalent to taking a sledgehammer to a walnut, walnut, to speak to that analogy, I would say that when people are starving and only the wealthiest can afford a nutcracker, sometimes you need to break out all the biggest tools in the shed to help everyone get to the nuts inside. The third thing I'm most proud of is all the small little wins that we've had along the way. Whether that's getting a representation model for the next triennium, which is really close to what was one of my preferred models at the outset of that review, and that includes our win on getting the establishment of the Rolmatic Community Board, um, whether it's getting council to finally endorse in principle to start the journey to become a living wage accredited employer, um, and more recently uh, there's the, been the pressure on getting the Ombudsman to finally launch the long overdue review of how local government is applying the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act and improving the transparency and accountability for councils, which is something I've been championing for a while now. Of course, there's always work that's going to be left unfinished. But when I think about those things, I know that I've played every card in my hand to progress them. And I make no apologies for having a one-track mind over the extension of commuter rail north of Waikanae. Well, technically, it's a double-tracked and electrified mind, but you get, the, you get the gist of it. And as for some of those other unfinished things, well, you're going to have to wait for a future campaign. You'll have to think up of your own ideas. But there's always going to be live issues that carry across trienniums. Um, on the Kapiti Gateway to Urahi, with that project being over budget and behind schedule, and it's been a focus for the elections and a lightning rod for the community, I'm just going to say, I told you so. On the airport, I'd urge you not to make the mistake of so many other small and medium-sized councils elsewhere around Aotearoa that have also chased flights of fancy full of business parks and bustling flight schedules, only to end up spending millions in operational and capital subsidies for ghost airports that are used by less than 0.2% of their population on any given day. If you're already in a desert, chasing a mirage is just going to leave our community chewing a mouthful of sand. Notwithstanding all the various legal processes to come, I would urge you to choose people, not planes, homes, not hangars. But on a far more important note than any of that stuff, I really want to thank a few people. The first here are the staff at Council, and that's for their tireless work over the past three years in what, as I alluded to earlier, have been some incredibly trying times. 
We haven't always agreed on things, and that's part of the tension that's meant to exist in this arrangement between the council as the organisation and the elected members representing the community. And as Rob mentioned, that's something that I've been pushing for around improving that contestability of advice. Um, but we're all working towards that same goal of making Kapiti a better place to work and live and play. And at the end of the day, I deeply respect your work in pursuing that. To our iwi partners, thank you for reinforcing the voice of Tangata Whenua at this table. Even if Council took our sweet time in getting you appointed as voting members of our committees, I hope that um, you get uh, reappointed to those whatever committees come in the new triennium from the get-go and that Council can better live up to its commitments under the Treaty and the Local Government Act. I also especially want to acknowledge the work of our democracy services team who throughout this triennium have supported elected members to carry out our duties. You've been efficient, you've been friendly, and you've been professional in everything you've done, and you're a credit to this organisation. You are integral to how our democracy functions. You're the oil that keeps the wheels turning smoothly, despite many of us uh, wheels being squeaky at times, and it's been an absolute pleasure to work with you. I also want to acknowledge my uh, fellow elected members for the time and effort you put into this. You're all criminally underpaid for what you do and uh, the robust feedback you get from the community at times. Um, but you are all deserving of respect for putting yourselves in this position and putting yourself up there. And as, um, as many of the, uh, the ads for the local elections around the country have been making the point this time round, lots of people are prepared to sit there and criticise councils for what they do, but very few are actually prepared to put up their hands and serve, so you all deserve credit for that. And finally, and most important of all, I want to thank the most important people in my life. And I know that it's true of everyone on this table that none of us would be here without support from similar people. And that's my whanau and our friends who have made the past three years possible. My two boys, Alex and Leon, they've been fantastic without even realising it. Nothing takes the weight of the world off your shoulders more than being forced to stop thinking about council and instead adjudicate on who is going to win a Pokemon battle between Pikachu and Jigglypuff. <laughs> My wife Renee in particular, I want to thank her for her wise counsel, her calming influence, and for her endless patience in humouring me for talking about various local government issues that must have surely bored her to tears. As Renee always says, we're a team and there is no one that I would rather have on my team than her. So to wrap up, and you'll be glad I'm finally finishing, I'll steal from the final words of Rome's greatest enemy, Hannibal Barca of Carthage, who loomed as a spectre over Rome for decades, even when he was uh, in exile in Asia Minor. He said, let us relieve the Romans from the anxiety they have so long experienced. And with that, I'm done. Until next time, Let's choo-choo this. <laughs> Thank you. Angela. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I sat with a previous councillor about seven years ago and said to him, you know, what, what's your legacy? What will be your legacy in your term as a councillor? And he said to me, oh, well, I'll set up a Facebook page. And I thought, shit, if I get elected, I want to be doing way more than that. And I want to be able to, I mean, maybe he was a bit kind of stunned by the question, but I thought, shit, I want to rattle off a whole heap of things that I've done and achieved in my six years that I've, that I've been sitting around this table. And... Um, and so, I mean, one of, one of, the, one of the major things that um, I was involved with, of course, was the opening of the, um, of the expressway, which was a massive infrastructure project for, um, for our district. But the reason really why I was um, brought on to council and voted in was there was no one really representing <coughs> business. There were a lot of older people on council, and it was really... Um, it was really fractious, and it was not a very nice place for anybody to be. And I sat um, in those gallery seats for a good 12 months before I was actually elected. And I sat and I watched the banter, the disrespect, the nastiness that went on around this table. And I thought, oh my gosh, something needs to change. And um, so I went on and put myself forward with the kick up the bum from a few um, Kapiti coasters, 
namely Lynn Barrows, Jenny, um, Julie, oh, Julene Hope and Heather Hutchings, all um, supporters of uh, the Chamber of Commerce and they, they wanted their voices heard um, around the table and so I gainfully went out and, and got elected. Now, not only did I get elected because I was a business person and have been pretty much all my life um, in, in Kapiti, but I, I have, I'm born and bred here and um, my kids have um, done all their schooling here and so I've always, I've always been extremely passionate about Kapiti, it's my home. You know, I could have lived anywhere, literally anywhere in the world, but I chose to come back and live in Kapiti because it's a district that I'm fiercely passionate about. And um, coming on to council, I have, I can hand on heart say that I've really made some changes and it wasn't in the first three years, but those first three years laid the foundations for change in the following three years. So significant change that I have seen in the last three years particularly has been um, obviously the economic development strategy, which, um, you know, we did have an economic strategy before I became council, uh, in council, but no one really cared about it. No one really lived and breathed it. And I remember standing on the podium in my first election campaign saying, we need to have a strategy that people live and breathe it. And we actually have that strategy now. We have that strategy that's led by the Kotahi Tanga Board, and you know, yesterday I had my final meeting with them. I'll get all emotional. Because I sat there and I thought, holy shit, these people are bloody powerful. You know, they're really powerful. They've got some excellent connections. They are highly skilled, highly intelligent people that are just really nailing exactly what we need for our district in terms of bringing economic um, prosperity into our district, bringing jobs into our district, getting education hubs set up, getting um, sectors working together um, in collaboration rather than in little silos because we're all too busy in our own businesses. They're bringing businesses together. That's just, we've never seen that before. And, um, and it's hidden because no one communicates that out to the community. And, and those kinds of things need to change and they will change once there's a bit more momentum there. The other thing that I've really loved is, um, is building those partnerships and connections with the likes of the Chamber of Commerce and KEDA, Creative Monarchy, um, and there are some really strong connections now with Wellington NZ that we didn't have before. Um, and once again, sitting around that Kotahitanga board table, they have got major inroads now into um, Wellington NZ's purses, which is exactly what we need. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's, really, that's really great. Another highlight for me was rocking on up to the um, Parliament steps, totally out of my depths, but um, rock on up to the Parliament steps to talk to um, ministers about our airport and our connection um, in terms of our economic development and um, our connection to the wider New Zealand, wider market up in Auckland and, and so forth. So that was a, that was a really, that was a really, really great, uh, great experience for me and great learning and certainly grew through, through those different experiences that I've, that I've had. I've really enjoyed working with the um, community groups as well. Friends of Otaki River have been amazing. Guardians of the Kapiti Marine Reserve have also been amazing, and both of those groups have achieved amazing things for the community, and so much so that they were recognised for their, um, you know, the highest community awards and things. So, and it's that it's that kind of community spirit, and we saw it here today. Bruce from the CWB that um, that I've been heavily involved in in the last six years. You know, he he was here, and he represents so many different groups as well as. Um, Max Lutz and to hear them speak and, and also um, respect and commend me for the hard work that I've done, that is just, that's really profound and I, I've really, really enjoyed working with, um, with community people like that. And I don't know, the, the biggest, I would say the biggest thing <laughs> that's really, oh my God, <laughs> that's really changed me has been these people. Speaking to Iwi and listening to their stories. The day that Mahina Rangi Baker came in and spoke about her family. 
things that are so raw, that are so raw, that are still happening in our community that are wrong. And we, around this table, have had the energy and the power to be able to change things, to work alongside iwi, listen to their views, and, and help them to, to navigate our views as well and work together. You know, Kapiti Coast District Council has had an agreement for over 25 years, the longest standing local government agreement with iwi. Now I came into this six years ago where that, that was very strong. We had, um, we had an amazing relationship and over those six years, it has really gone up and down. And, and I, I'm really, really pleased to know that um, after the ups and downs of the last six years that I can hand on heart say that um, we're in a better place. And um, I know that I know that iwi are also feeling the same thing. So um, I'm really pleased that I have also benefited from um, those strong voices around the table and the richness that they have offered me as a person to understand the spirituality of the Maori culture. So on that note, I'm going to finish. <laughs> um, but I'd also like to um, obviously thank all the other supporters that I've had um, in, in my life over the last six years um, through business colleagues, my amazing staff. My amazing staff have carried on my business um, over the last year with me being virtually absent, um, looking after the community in different ways. And they've, they've totally respected my journey as, as I have theirs. Also my family, um, you know, over these last six years, my kids have grown, they've flown and yes, they're doing other amazing things. Um, and of course my, my mum and um, <coughs> my partner Steve um, and all his friends and fellow supporters have been amazing. So yeah, after six years of sitting around this table, um, I'd like to say goodbye. Thank you very much. Anybody online? Shame there. Thank you all very much for coming. I now bring the meeting to not quite an end. <laughs> um, let me start by saying I have, my calling has always been a journalist. I have found the elected position uh, a cross to bear. Having said that, you know, for 14 years that I've been a local reporter, what I've been able to do is what a journalist does, that is to take issues, the most hidden issues, and throw them into the public arena, the democratic space, so that people can see what's happening and be able to make decisions out of the information that they get. I didn't care whether you're right wing, you're left wing, you're National Party, you're Labour Party, you're a your, your gang member, uh, you're anything. Everybody deserves to have the views in the public space. That was my calling. That is still my calling. And that's what I did. Kathy knows. Or one of the councillors eating um, a, a pie, and then the story goes how much the council spends on feeding the councillors. Um, and I've got up the notes of a lot of people, and I know there are people in the council who hate in my guts. But that goes with the territory. Then I got the sack from my job in the Kapi Observer over a story that I wrote in the airport. Two more years in the other, other media, and I decided to become a council. People said you should step up. One of the, I learned a lesson of baptism of fire when we had to make a decision on the exact route that the expressway was going to take through Parapramu. There were stories that I'd written about the people who protested, who lived on the route 
about 12 houses that were supposed to be knocked down just north of um, Queen Elizabeth Park. I remember doing stories at that time of this person who actually built their house, was their home. But when I was a counselor and there's one of the decisions that, that we had to make, I had to choose a decision to put the road through their houses. That was the hardest, hardest decision ever. You have to bear everything up. Whereas when I was a journalist, I could put everybody's perspective into the outside. I was a friend to everybody. But as a counselor, you have to weigh things and make decisions. Everybody can't win. Everybody can't lose. But you have to make the decision. And you have to bear the cost of that decision making. I went back home and I cried. Because the people that I represented as a journalist, I could not represent them anymore because I had to waste up. That was baptism of fire. That's what we do eh, around this table. You know, on different things that we take and make decisions, we get a bollocking. And we know currently, you know, a number of counselors out there, we get a bollocking over the Gateway Project. Um, at the same time, on that matter, we talk about EV and the mana of the EV. These are difficult times. One of the things, even as a journalist, that I found in terms of the council is through civil emergencies. There are a number of floods, serious floods. And every time you see people who are down with the boots on the ground taking the risk, doing the mahi, day or night, council staff, your depot staff. Tremendous amount of commitment. Because these are people mostly who live in this community. They are part and parcel of this community. People don't understand this. That people here, when you say, oh, the bloody council, this, that, the other, when the chips are bloody down, they are the ones in the forefront. And I saw that during the pandemic particularly because this was like, we were freaking out. People were absolutely freaking out what was happening. And the call came and then, the, and the, you know, the way this room, this office, this building emptied, people taking the equipment back to the houses so they can work from home. And I tell you what, the, the, the workers in the treatment plants willing to leave their own family so they can stay in those wastewater treatment plant, in the, in the water treatment plant, so that the basic function of this community could be carried out at cost of their own families. That's bloody good, you know, that's commitment. But you hear, you know, the fucking rates are high. This is the, you know, this is happening, that is happening, council, uh, council this, council that. And we know for a start, you know, yes, the rates go up. And yes, every year, annual plan or long-term plan, we have to go and consult them. The government doesn't have to do that when they come up with the budgets. We do. They make the decisions on the legislation that we have to carry it out and rate the people to do carry it out. And, and they get it wrong, we get the blame. Uh, through the pandemic, I saw the staff in a, in a heightened perspective in terms of their commitment. That alone should show us what it means to be serving a community. And one of the important things is when we put our hands up to be elected, one of the things I've always stressed is each of us around the table it's not just you who sits here. You sit here because there's public support for your position. So you are a representative of the democratic will of the people. So when you talk to different councillors, elected members, never mind the personality, it's who you represent behind that you owe your respect to. 
that should be your guiding principle in terms of how you speak, how you entertain them, how you mean you respect them. That is important. The personality can sometimes be irritating, can sometimes be offline, whatever it is, but always bear the benchmark. Always bear the benchmark because this is a democratic process. This is representative democracy. I worked with Pat Doherty, Wayne Maxwell, Sean Temporary, Gary. Your relationship with the chief executive is really critical. Absolutely critical. Know that there's for, as elected members, you have a role. Know also management have a role. There is natural tension between that, that that's acceptable. Again, the question of respect, how you deal with it, who you talk to, how you talk to them, and also learn that there are areas that you don't go. But as new councillors come in, and, and every election, about one third of us get turnover. Makes it difficult of learning uh, what the relationship is all about, the tension is all about, how to manage that. I agree with Gwen. There is an, the tension is required to be a challenging, but out of respect, out of understanding of what the rules are. I'll tell you what, we, from the governance side, we represent that democracy, which is the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, can put your hands up and get elected. Staff, not so easy. They are very highly qualified people, expertise. They've got their strength. We have our strength. And in times of great change, which is what's happening now, whether you're talking about the government's reform movement, huge changes. The pandemic has caused a huge lot of changes. And worse, global changes. The geopolitics that's going on is absolutely frightening. Absolutely frightening. The climate change factor. Hang on. Oh, it's Prince Charles. Sorry, it's King Charles. King Charles. Hold on, I just have to take this. Oi. Yo, how far off are you? See? <laughs> uh, you are non broadcast to the whole meeting. This is my son. I I'll call you shortly. Okay then, very good. Hi. It's all recorded, day. Eh? But you know, going back to a number of accounts, we talked about the family and so on. That's that's what it is. So the the, the type of changes that are coming on, and the w one change that I want to emphasize is, Angela, you brought it up. You know, Sophie, Martin. Janet, our relationship with Evie. Democracy, people see it as a rule of the majority. A close neighbor of that, cheek to cheek, dancing with that is the tyranny of the majority. But we have the treaty. The treaty gives the minority an exceptional power base and the partnership means partnership of equals. The tension is not just here, it's right across the country. A series of government legislations have increased power of Maori engagement. And it is useful to know that this is changes coming top down. But mainstream is finding it difficult. There is tension there. And this general election that's going to come, they will be levered. I can already see it. Even a chocolate wrapper can make a huge problem. Anyway, the chocolate from Whitakers was bloody good. I fear that we will be persuaded by a tyranny of majority of votes for you to think in particular ways. I don't want to stress too much on that. Because for your own political survival, there's two ways of thinking about it. You can say, 
I want to get elected, then I can continue the changes that's necessary because the mainstream is not quite ready for the change. Once I'm on the other side, I can. By the same token, be careful because we are, as we committed ourselves through the principles of the treaty expressed through the long-term plan in partnership with EWI, that we'll have a mutually enhancing mana, mutually mana enhancing relationship. Bear that in mind. It is very easy for us to slip back because personal political survival. I can understand the tension, but be very careful. And the other other issues. Um, this community will continue to have a healthy number of senior citizens. 26% currently age 65 and over. The near future you're looking at that's going up to 30, 36. A lot of younger people coming up, young families coming up here. You got this. And I'm saying that because look after me. <laughs> One of the things I tell young people is very young people is this. You should join Grey Power. And they said, What's Grey Power? Oh, Grey Power is an organization that looks after old people. But I'm not old. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the 70 year old inside you that's going to come out soon. Because it's bear that in mind when you have old people in the community, Maori, Tia Maori, you understand that. When you have older people in the community, you know what reality is. When you have extended families where the older people are living with your children, young children, that life is an illusion. You, when you're young, you think you'll last forever. It's good to know that all people are here. It's good to have them as a reminder that the power that you seek through public office, if that's what you're into, whatever you are into, is temporary. That's the wisdom you cannot get. But when you have old people with you, surrounding you, that's the wisdom that you, they give you. Every time you see them, that's a, that's a comment on yourself. So what is it worth your while, whatever you're doing in life, that gives you that. And I'll end by this. The, my son rang me up, 24 years old. Three years ago, I had a massive bloody argument with him. And he said, oh, your generation and the earlier generations have sold us out, this climate change. So now we cannot have children because we'll be having children into the world. You're stuffed up. And one year ago, he gave me my first grandchild. I sort of agreed with him in the sense that I think it's too late. The amount of carbon emission that's baked into the system is already unfolding now, and we are stuffed. But because I've got a grandson, I looked at him and said, look, this, he's got to have a future. I have no choice but to have hope. Absolutely no choice. So in that silence, I end my, whatever you call it, big, is that a Latin word, valedictory? Is it? Yeah, Farewell. But um, having said that, <laughs> but having, having said that, don't be too surprised if the not too distant future, I'm sitting on the press bench. There's a warning. <laughs>